my name is Susan Walter. I'm in Kansas City, Kansas. Well, actually, I'm on the Kansas side of Kansas City. But um, anyway, um, I did have near-death experiences. I've had two. Um, the first one was at the age of four. And I had a medical issue where I needed um, to have life-saving surgery. And I remember laying on the couch in the um, in the home that we were, my family was living in the, at the time it was a, an old, a very old farmhouse. And I remember this blanket being on me. And even though it was summertime, it was just, the blanket was so heavy, I couldn't move. And that's just how weak I was because of what was going on in my body. And it was, you know, rural Iowa, um, you know, and still in the sixties when the doctor still came to your home. And I remember the doctor um, kind of checking me out a little bit. And then my parents and the doctor went to the next room. Even though my body was still on the couch, I followed them. But I was like up on the ceiling looking down at them. And I remember them discussing um, if they were going to take me to the local hospital that was only probably about 10, 10 or so minutes away or if they were gonna take me to University of Iowa Hospital in Iowa City, which was you know, a little over an hour away. They decided to take me to the local hospital and the discussion was how I was gonna get there, who was gonna transport me. Um, they decided that uh, my mom would sit with me and that um, we'd go in the doctor's car and my dad would follow later as he you know, made arrangements for my younger brother and sister. And from there, I seemed to go to this park that was like the most beautiful um, park I've ever seen. It's everything just glowed is the best way I can describe it. And the trees were massive. Um, I had never seen anything like the redwoods at that time, but I would equate the trees to that size now that I've seen them. Um, but yeah, and under one of the trees were th what I just, how I just knew, I, I don't know, but I just knew it was three of my own personal angels. And, and they kind of introduced themselves. And just so you know, I was one of those kids on the farm that if there was a nest of baby animals, whether it was mice or snakes or birds or whatever, I found them. I would just very gently play with them for a little bit and then put them back exactly where I found them, back in their nest. Um, so I was very connected to the animals and to the earth at that time in my life. And I remember then, you know, they asked me and pretty much if I just wanted to see the world through the eyes of the animals. And it's like, I, it, it's, it was really like the whole experience was like they were just occupying my time while my body was going through the medical, you know, surgery. But it's, you know, from there, I just kind of went from animal to animal, but I mostly stuck with animals I was familiar with. That first experience, that first NDE, I really don't remember even how it ended. I just remember all of a sudden I was pretty much, you know, I was back in the hospital. Uh, you know, and my, you know, my mom and my, you know, my dad were both there. My second experience at six, I actually remember more details um, where again, um, I had to have this very similar life-saving surgery again. And I don't really remember though what the buildup to it. I don't remember that piece. Um, and cause you know, I, my body would have been in a great deal of pain at the time. But again, I'm back in this same beautiful garden that just, you know, everything just glowed and it just felt so good and so peaceful to be there and felt very accepted. And anyway, again, I'm back in the garden. Um, again, they're asking me if I wanted, you know, first I'm asking questions about Sunday school. And one of the things I really specifically remembered and I continued to ask this in Sunday school for quite a while and got in trouble about it. But um, I really wanted to know how long God's day was because it didn't make sense to me from what I had seen from my first experience that this, what felt like a massive being and massive energy, that their day was the same size as, our, as ours. It just, it made sense to me that in my child's mind that their day was longer. 
Um, but, you know, I asked, you know, several questions about Sunday school and I was pretty much kind of just patted on the head kind of attitude, you know, we were being taught what we could understand best and where we're at at this moment. And, and I understood that to be partly because of my age as well. But um, from there again, they asked me if I wanted to experience going, you know, the world through the eyes of the animals. But this time I went even to, into some animals I was not as familiar with um, and ended up where I was swimming in what I believe and my understanding it was is in the ocean and in a massive, massive being. So probably some type of whale. And then I wasn't swimming in the ocean in the, anymore. I was, even though I seemed to be in the same body, I was swimming in space. And then I saw this, it was like the moment of creation, that moment they call, the scientists have been called the big bang, though scientists have now discovered it wasn't necessarily a bang, it was a tone. And it, and, but anyway, it's, it was like, there was waves of souls coming out. It's like souls would come out and then like some of them would go back, you know, like, and like an in, exhale, inhale type of wave. So, and, and then that just kept going back and forth and back and forth. And, and then, you know, as the wave kind of, the first wave got closer to me, I was shown that I was in that, that first initial wave at first initial exhale and how my my soul and two others were like pulled aside is the best way I can explain it. Um, and we were specifically asked to become planet creators. I'm still trying to fully wrap my head around what that even fully means. Um, the, when the two beings, when the Skeksis and the mystics remerge and create those beings that really tall and made of light, it's that's who it's very similar to the being that pulled me and these two other souls aside. It's very similar to that. Very bright and glowed like that too. But, uh, but the shape was very, it was a little blurry, not super distinctive, but, um, and they pulled out what some sort of screen and showed us what it'd be like if we did take on these roles and what it'd be like if we did not. And yeah, I obviously did, um, but two other beings did not. They chose to go on to the angelic realms, but I was taken someplace um, where I went through you know, a training as the best way I can describe it. I remember vaguely, you know, them showing me being in it, not a standard classroom setting like what we think of as, you know, public schools and universities today. It was a little more free flowing, more, I guess, more of an auditorium type feeling um, with very comfortable chairs. And, you know, I just remember being in that and being going through. But the training wasn't, you know, necessarily a lecture. It was experiential where, you know, they'd say, okay, hey, you, know, you need to learn how to do this. And we'd have to practice and do it, you know, one at a time. Um, but, yeah, you know, that's really all I remember about that. Um, and, and then all of a sudden, I'm kind of like back at the garden again for just a moment. And um, I am asked if I wanted to continue um, though I don't think I fully understood what they even meant, but the next thing I know, I am back at the, at, you know, in the hospital, you know, in the hospital bed, and waking up, and my one of my grandmothers um, is sitting next to me. Like a lot of people that have had NDEs, particularly those that seem to have had them in their younger years, um, I came back with the ability to see my own angels all the time. They were just they made a constant impact in my life particularly those three that I saw in that experience, though the one the ones that were the most present, though there were times I saw others as well. Um, though it wasn't until 1997 when I realized I wasn't seeing just my own anymore. I was seeing everybody else's. And the first time I realized that, because at the time I was a stay-at-home mom, I had two young 
teenage boys, and I also had two toddlers. Um, so, you know, I, I was at the grocery store with the two toddlers and all of, I realized what I was seeing and it, at first it was very overwhelming. It kind of freaked me out just a little bit, even though I knew exactly what it was I was seeing, but it was so overwhelming. I literally left the grocery cart in the middle of the aisle and went home um, and, you know, did took care of that part of my life later. But as soon as I was able I sat down in meditation, um, which I was already doing, you know, meditating at that point as often as I could, which, you know, when you've got four kids, it's a little difficult. But, um, you know, as soon as I could, I sat down in meditation and just kind of like, what's going on here? Why am I seeing this? What am I supposed to do with this? I think all the questions any of us would ask at that point. And they made it very clear that they wanted me to find some way to draw or paint them. Um, and from there, I I first started playing with watercolor, watercolors. And I quickly learned that watercolor is probably one of the most difficult painting mediums there is. Um, so I got some pastels and I used pastels for a few years doing um, angel portraits, but um, to be honest, for the first six months, even I argued, it's like, is I, you know, number one, didn't have a lot of time to do something like that with the four kids, raising four kids and eventually even becoming a single parent. But um, I really, I had no artistic skills at all. I had no idea how to paint or draw. My skills have improved over the years and even just, you know, things continue to evolve and change. Um, I think as the veils between the different frequencies, different dimensions, whatever you want to call them, um, get thinner, um, I see more details. Um, and even as of well, it's probably about four years ago now, and doing the angel portraits, I started seeing um, light language, um, usually starting at the throat, going down the center of the body of the angels. And for those of you who don't know what light language is, it's much more about energy than it is about a, a true, what we think of as like language, like English or French or whatever. It's really much more about energy. But if you want to communicate with the angels, the first, you, you communicate with them. Talk, they're old friends. That's who you sat down with between your lifetimes to figure out what lessons you wanted to learn, what experiences you wanted to have. So they're very dear friends. So talk to them like that. Because even, you know, the, even the one that's considered to be your main guardian angel, um, and that one usually showed themselves to me as having like a breastplate, like an armor around the chest. Um, that one's been with you all of your physical lifetimes. And that isn't always restricted just to earth. Um, and other your other angels, because everybody has minimum three. Um, is, you know, they want us, they want to help us, but they need permission with a lot of things to help us. So if you're asking for assistance, even if it's something what we would think of as simple, like you know, finding a parking spot you know, and when you're driving downtown in the you know, it's a place where it's always hard to find a good parking place, um, to them, it's all about timing and moving energy around, around in the right timing, you know, that's for the best and highest good of everyone. Because there might be somebody, you know, say a handicapped person might need that spot more than you do at the moment. So it'd be about right timing that that person would leave the spot just as you needed it. And we think that of that as something simple where maybe finding our next career position, it would be something a little more difficult. No, it's not. It's still moving energy around, you know, and people around in the right timing. Because, you know, there may be a person in that job that, for example, they're not ready to leave or retire yet, for example, to make room for you. That position may be a new position and then they're still developing what that is. So it's all about right timing and the best and highest good for everybody. But talk to them more, ask for their assistance. But um, when the, you do, you know, when you do receive those blessings, make sure you're saying taking the time to have gratitude and say thank you.